In this video, I'll show you how to implement SCD type 1, 2 and also 3. For this session, I have a MySQL table um, as an input. So product underscore details is our input table and here are the uh, values in it. Uh, I have a product name, product type and also product price. Um, and then uh, I have a separate tables uh, to store values for SCD 1, 2 and 3 separately so that it is easier to follow when you guys you know, practice. Alright, so on my talent studio, I have already imported those uh, four tables under metadata section uh, under MySQL. So I'm going to start uh, with uh, the SCD type one here. I'm going to use uh, the product details as my uh, DB input. And since we're drawing uh, with the SCD one, I'll bring in the SCD one uh, target table. And uh, while I choose my target, I'll choose a DB SCD component. And this is how it looks. Uh, let's look at the properties. So this uh, component has got several sections here. One is unused, source keys and the surrogate keys. And here are the type 0, type 1, type 2 and the versioning strategy and type 3. So let's uh, concentrate on the type 1 for now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll go ahead and uh, add um, the connection first. We'll be using the main component and we'll uh, drag it to this and uh, it will ask you whether I want to get, get the target schema for now I'll skip uh, no because my target has got one extra key field so which I don't want to uh, bring in here so before uh, we set up uh, let us also look at uh, the target table for the type 1 this is the target table and as you can see the table is empty it has got product key, product ID, product name, type and price so I'll be using this table as target for my SCD1 example. All right, so now we have everything ready. Let's go ahead and configure this. Uh, when you open, after connecting, when you open this component, you should be able to see the input uh, columns here. So initially they all, they'll all be uh, unused. Um, since we wanted to perform uh, type one, which is nothing but um, you, if, if the record does not exist, then do an insert or if there is a record already existing, you do an update on top of it. So for that, um, I'm going to pull in um, the product ID as my source key because based on this, um, the performance uh, on the update will happen. Uh, so whenever there is a change on any of these fields, um, these uh, values will be updated based on the product ID. If this product ID is that does not exist, then um, it will be uh, inserted into uh, the target. If it is already existing, then it's going to update uh, any of the changed value into our target. Right. So setting up the source key and then the type one fields is uh, mandatory. And third thing is uh, the surrogate key. Uh, surrogate key is nothing but a running number uh, on this uh, target table. Uh, basically for every change uh, or any new entries, there will be a new product key generated for it. So if you have a hundred product, there will be a running number of you know, one to hundred. We even when you do an update, um, uh, the product key will not change uh, in type one because uh, the uh, the change values will be updated uh, for uh, type one. So uh, as and when we add more products, you know the, this key will also uh, increment. All right, so I'll go back to uh, this SCD component. I'll go ahead and type in product underscore key, which is my um, the actual circuit key on the table. And this option creation is um, having uh, different uh, options. Uh, this gives us flexibility to automatically increment the number or uh, use the table max one uh, plus one. Uh, what it does is if your target is used by multiple other uh, jobs then uh, the IDs will be different so you may want to choose this um, you know table max plus one um, so that whenever there is a new entry it will take a maximum of uh, product key and then do a plus one and then insert that record right so there are the three settings are needed for uh, the type one which is source key surrogate key and then the type one field Alright, I'll go ahead and uh, click OK and now the job is ready. I'll go and save it and uh, let's uh, run the job. 
Okay, as you can see, there are five records in the source. All the five records have been written to the final target. Let's go back to the database and see. Um, so initially the table was empty and let's look at it. Okay, all right. So the five records are uh, inserted here. And um, for uh, this type one update uh, thing, we'll try with another uh, um, you know small update on this table, uh, the source table. And we'll try to um, make that in updates here. So for that, uh, currently the price is 20,000 uh, for the first uh, record. I'm going to make it as um, 30,000 for the product one. All right, so I made my updates on the source table, which is the product table. Now the computer is, you know, 30,000. Um, so let's go back and run the same job again. Okay, now we have done another uh, load. Let's go back to this target table again. Okay, so as you can see, the existing record has been updated uh, to 30,000 now. So this is how type one uh, is performed. Um, even if there is any uh, change in values, it's just going to update the existing record. So there is no history created in type one. All right, so let's move on to uh, the type two. For that, I have a separate table here. Um, let's look at uh, the table structure first. Now, uh, you see the st standard um, columns here, product key, ID, name, type and price. These are the standard uh, columns from the source. And uh, for type two, uh, we will have to have um, more um, you know, fields to determine uh, which, what is the start date uh, for the first version of the record and what's the end date of um, that particular record if there is a new entry or new change in the uh, um, you know a change in values and there is a field called status flag which will identify whether my uh, particular record is a latest or not so this is how we identify so let's say uh, we have a product name uh, which is uh, let's query this table so we have a laptop and a computer, 30,000. So what will happen is uh, in uh, SCD type two. So when when we keep uh, 30,000, uh, the same record would be coming in with the start date as a current date and end date will be null and the status flag will be you know active, right? That indicates um, the active uh, record. So let's say I change uh, the value uh, to something else and I run the job again. So type two will always uh, keep adding histories and ex uh, and update an existing record to you know end, right? So what will happen uh, from thirty thousand to forty thousand? If I increase, there will be one record with thirty thousand uh, with the start date as thirty, um, and then um, when when you run the second uh, execution, the end date would be updated back to. Uh, the current time again and then the status flag would be you know, inactive now and there will be a new record inserted for that 40,000 record so let's take a look and um, you know do this um, task <coughs> so right now I have 30 I'll load it as is now and then I'll come back and um, you know do capture the history part okay so let me go ahead and uh, disable this current job the same way I'll bring in the source again as an input and I'll bring in my SCD2 table as my target uh, using the DBSCD component and uh, the same way you're gonna go ahead and uh, connect it via main uh, connection and click no and let's get into this uh, settings again so in this case uh, what uh, is now required is um, we this setting is common product underscore key I still want uh, product key to be my surrogate key even when there is a history and uh, the regular update should happen on product ID and uh, this time I want um, you know uh, the SCD uh, to be done on done on basically that uh, pricing okay so for that I'll bring in the price so whenever there is a change in price, it's going to add uh, the history. So when you uh, type that, uh, when you bring in that product price into type two fields, 
uh, what happens is uh, the type 2 history is um, started you know, capturing on this uh, field for for this field uh, we will have to set up the start time start date start date and end date and also uh, the active uh, version right active uh, flag so for that uh, if you go back to my um, my sql table uh, the scd type 2 has got start underscore date and end and end underscore date so the same thing you will have to pass in here start underscore date and then end underscore date so these are my uh, start and end and for the status uh, thing we will have the status underscore flag so as you see status underscore flag is my uh, active all right so now we have performed all this uh, type 2 and since uh, we don't want to do any uh, changes to these two fields uh, I will just drag it to type 0 which means you know there's no change um, gonna happen on uh, these two fields if you want to do we still do an update on um, you know these as in uh, type 1 you can still do it by dragging it to uh, type 1 section so for now uh, we will use uh, the product price as our uh, history point and uh, we have already set the versioning uh, with the start date end date and the status flag and on the surrogate key uh, we'll still use uh, the product key and we'll do table uh, you know max plus one all right so click on uh, ok save the job and now run the job okay so now uh, the same fire records have been uh, loaded to our target let's go back to this table all right so now we have all the standard fire uh, records um, with the start date as you know uh, current uh, you know date here so let's say the next day uh, if one of the value changes for example I'll go back and update um, my source table and I'll make this product price to let's say 40,000 right so now um, the value for uh, the laptop is now 40,000 so now uh, we'll go back to our talent job we'll run this again okay so job is completed successfully and uh, let's go ahead and check this table okay so now as you can see um, so there are uh, the first five uh, records are the existing ones so initially only the start date was populated but the end date was not populated uh, now uh, the old record is marked with end date and also status is now false which means this is the older record right uh, because uh, there is a change in the price so type 2 will will be doing two operations one is that it will insert a uh, the new um, value as a brand new record uh, with the start date and it will also update the existing record to ended and also the status flag uh, for the old record will be false and the new record will be true so if you want all, always you know query um, the current values uh, you should be applying this filter let's do one more update here uh, so this time I'm going to update uh, the product ID to to let's say you know, 20,000 and this is done let's run the job again okay now I'm gonna query the same table now uh, you see the older record with um, uh, this entry has now ended the status flag is update to false and there's a new entry for the second record uh, with the start date as uh, current date and end date will be null and the status flag is equal to true which means this is the latest um, and the current record for type 3 uh, let's look at the table so this has got the same set of uh, columns again uh, so this time what I want to do is uh, since the product name I will use um, this is the current uh, product name for the previous product name uh, we will be creating a new column uh, wherein uh, it will capture the previous uh, or the old value for the product name so in type 3 uh, the main difference is we will not be keep on adding um, in history records instead we will be keeping only the previous version so if the product is you know laptop and uh, 
if we change it to uh, something else the old value will be captured in this uh, new column and uh, the regular column will uh, get updated all right so let's um, you know build this uh, scd3 i'll go ahead and um, deactivate this whole song and the same way we'll bring in uh, the source table as an input and a cd3 table as my scd target and we'll connect it using uh, main flow uh, and we'll click say no all right so let's get into the uh, settings here in the settings again uh, we will have uh, similar uh, settings here uh, so two things will not change here the product id still remains as our uh, source key and uh, our product key will still remain as our uh, surrogate key and we'll keep, keep an option called table max plus one um, all right so now uh, since we are trying to do um, type 3 on the product name we will be pulling uh, into this section type 3 fields and uh, if you see uh, this uh, is already uh, populated with the exact column name so I'm not going to change uh, anything here uh, this is the same uh, name this is a new field name previous product name so I'll keep it uh, as is all right so when you're doing uh, type 3 you don't have to specify anything under type 2 and uh, type 0 and type 1 is also not required but uh, if you want to do uh, still want to do any update you can still bring in these values and drop it on to type 1 or you can uh, even type it as uh, type 0 so it doesn't really matter uh, it's based on your requirement whether you want to capture uh, any updates on these uh, uh, fields or not all right so that's all on uh, the settings click ok and save the job let's run the job again okay so the job is now completed successfully i'll go back and check the type 3 table okay so these are our standard uh, set of uh, you know um, records from the source so right now um, there's no change happened uh, for this uh, so that's why we don't have we don't see any um, values for the previous product name so now let's go ahead and uh, update our uh, source table um, I'll change uh, the product name so I will go ahead and use it as you know Intel laptop and this applies for um, the product ID number one I'll go ahead and update okay the source uh, table is now updated so instead of uh, just the laptop uh, we have updated to Intel laptop okay so once this is done uh, let's go back to our talent studio and we'll run the job again okay so the job is completed on the table let's go ahead and query it okay so now you see that um, first record uh, it was just a product name was just a laptop and we changed it to we updated it to Intel laptop so the new product name is already listed here but uh, the previous uh, product name is now listed under previous product name so this is how you um, you know keep track of just the previous version we're not going back all the way uh, we're not really uh, keeping any history uh, more history so it's just a one uh, previous version so just to summarize uh, type 1 is um, just an insert else update if the record is already existing it will do an update otherwise it will do an insert type 2 uh, what we have seen is um, so whenever there is a, a new record or update coming in uh, the end date will be populated for the existing uh, record and status will be set to false and there will be a new record created for it and in type 3 we are keeping only limited history which is current version and the previous version so the regular column will have uh, the current version of the uh, value and uh, the previous product name will have the previous version of the value 